God bless, God bless my friends here, ready to read Matthew chapter 7 with you, amen. It is 29 verses, my friends. Let's give thanks and get into this word today, amen, amen. Okay, so, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word that is, is going to be presented today, this chapter, Father, we pray that you will just guide us through this word and open up our minds and hearts and give us the wisdom and knowledge we need in Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I'm going to read this word in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with the measure, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mot that is in thy brother's eye? But consider not the beam that is in thine own eye. Or how wilt thy say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in your own eye? Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest thy trample them under their feet, and turn again and read you. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receive it, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there to you whom if his son ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a, ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him? Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, ye do even so to them. For this is the law of law in the prophets. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there eat. They're at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raveling wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a, co a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name has cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings, of mine and do with them i will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, 
the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Amen. 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 So. Let's see here. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> amen. <clears throat> Apparently, the tendency to judge one another was world spread in the first century and has been common in religious groups um, throughout history. Although Christianity should be exception to this weakness, the basic ethical foundation to the Christian faith is that disciples being children of God should love one another. Amen. Um, since love is the fulfillment of the law and God is love. Human nature still leaves Christians open to sin of unfairly judging others. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of judgment. Amen. Glory to God. And it says here in verse 1, Judge not that ye be not judged. Amen. Amen. Judge not. Jesus condemns the habit of criticizing others while ignoring one's own faults. When you have something wrong, we all have our faults. And we shouldn't be criticizing anyone or judging anyone for their faults. Amen. But we should be love. Believers must first, first submit themselves to God's righteousness standard before attempting to examine and influence the conduct of other Christians. <clears throat> Verse 2. For what... For... For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in your own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye? And behold, a beam is in your own eye. Amen. 5. They are hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Amen. So judging is an unjust manner also includes con uh, condemning a wrongdoer without desiring to see the offender return to God and his ways. You're just judging them like, oh, they're never going to make it. They're not going to do good. That's the kind of judgment that is, is not tolerated. Any judgment is not tolerated. Amen. Um, we should always be praying for our brothers and sisters um, that fall away to come back to the Lord or if they're struggling to help lift them up. Love them and not judge them. Amen. Christ is not denying the necessity of exercising a certain degree of discernment or of ma making value value judgments with respect to sin in others elsewhere we are condemned uh condemned um uh, commanded i'm sorry to identify false ministers within the church um verse 15 but and to evaluate the character of the individuals right we must pay attention amen secondly the verse must um must not be used to an excuse, you know, um, for for church discipline. It's, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Church discipline. Amen. Amen. So, it says, it's like basically telling us, if we have faults, who are we to judge them who has faults? Who are we to be the judges? We are not the judges. We are the ones that are supposed to build up our our brothers and sisters, our family in Christ, and those that we love. Hallelujah. Not condemn them, but lovingly help them. Amen. Without judgment, there is only one judge. Amen. And that is not us people. And that is not us church members. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we can help lovingly help our brothers and sisters that are fallen and lovingly help them get up but we do not condemn them we do not judge them and think that we are better than anybody because we are not better than any anybody amen we are all in this this together we are all in the same boat amen 
trying to 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 do the will of the lord amen and we must help each other if we're going to stay united and firm amen in the lord <clears throat> Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls unto swine, lest they trample under their feet and turn against and rend you. Amen. Ask and it shall be given you. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. If you were seeking, you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Very famous verse. Amen. 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 For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be open. Or what man is there of you whom, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Amen. If your son asks you for bread, are you going to give him a stone? No, you're going to give him bread. You're going to give him something good. If you ask for something good, the Lord is going to give you something good. Amen. He's not going to give you a stone if you ask for bread. Amen. Or if you ask for a fish, he will give you a serpent. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good tidings, good things to them that ask him? Amen, amen. Amen. Let me see. Ask, ask. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. This is encourages um, Jesus encourages um, perseverance in prayer. Uh, the tense of the Greek verb in verses eight um, designates continued action. Means continued action. This means we must keep on asking, seeking, and knocking. We must continue. Asking implies consciousness of need in the belief that God hears our prayers. Seeking implies earnest petitioning along with obedience to the will of God. Uh, knocking implies perseverance in coming to God, even when he does not respond quickly or as fast as we think he should, right? Christ is insurance that those who seek will receive what they ask is based on. First, seeking first the kingdom of God, right? Recognizing God's fatherly goodness um, and love. Um, so that was secondly, recognizing God's uh, fatherly goodness and love. Thirdly, praying according to God's will. Praying to God's will. Fourthly, maintaining fellowship with Christ. And fifthly, obeying Christ. Amen. Obeying Christ. Your father gives good things. Christ promises that the father will not disappoint his children. He loves us even more than a good earthly father loves his children. And he wants us to give, he wants to, um, wants us to ask him for whatever we need. He wants us to ask. Uh, promising to give us what is good. He declares to provide solutions for our problems in bread for our daily needs. And most of all, he gives the Holy Spirit um, to to his children as their counselor and helper. Amen. Amen. He gives us the Holy Spirit. Apparently, the tendency to judge one another um, is, is big. Um, the next pitfall disciples face is the loss of faith. Um, Jesus encourages his disciples to keep on asking, seeking, and knocking, right? Like we just was going through. For true faith never loses heart and quits. We never lose heart. We never stop asking. We don't quit. Amen. Um, we hold firm to our petitions. We hold firm to our prayer of life and trust in the Lord. Amen. Disciples are to be like their heavenly father. They are to love one another and be constant in their faith. Right? Amen. Verse 10 says, Therefore all things whatsoever ye that men should do to you ye do ye even <clears throat> even so to them for this is the law of the prophets amen the golden rule as this saying is commonly known 
is not unique to Jesus or Christianity, um, for it is found the most religious in some form. In Judaism, it is found in a negative form. One ancient Jewish rabbi, Rabbi Hillelio, summarized it as follows. What is hateful to yourself? Do to no other. Do to no other. The Christian form as given by Jesus is, however, more positive and powerful than the negative, negative form, which does not deny the good intention of the negative form. This um, proverbable saying is simply another way of expressing the fundamental kingdom ethic of loving one another. The golden rule expresses the law of love, is what the law, the prophets were all about. Amen. The law. The law. Amen. Verse 13, we're on. Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth to unto life, and few there be that find it. Amen. 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 Straight is the gate. Straight is the gate and few there be. Amen. So Jesus taught that the majority of the multitudes would not follow him on the road that leads to life. Um, seeking those who enter the humble gate of true repentance and deny themselves to follow Jesus sincerely endeavor to obey his commands earnestly seek his kingdom and his righteousness and preserve until the end in true faith uh, purity and love are not the many but the few many not the many but the few jesus in his sermon on the mount describes the great blessings that accompany uh discipleship um, in his kingdom but he also ins ins insists that his disciples will not escape persecution furthermore contrary to to some evangelists who preach that getting saved is one of the easiest things in the world Jesus taught that following him involves heavy obligations concerning righteousness acceptance and persecution love for enemies and self-denial Amen, amen. Amen. Sixteen, ye shall know them by their fruits, but men gather grapes of thorns or figs or thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire therefore by your fruits ye shall know them amen amen know them by their fruit teaches who outwardly appears righteous um, but inwardly are raveling wolves. Um, at times be identified by their fruits. The fruits of false teachers will be um, unwholesome, um, evident, uh, characteristics evident in the lives of the followers, um, such as those listed, listed here. And they will be professing Christians. Holy loyal, loyalty is more to personalities than the word of God. Um, they worship and create more than the creator. They worship the creature, I'm sorry. They worship the creature more than the creator. Amen. They will be more concerned about their own desires than what God, God's glory and honor. 
Um, their doctrine will be self-centered rather than God-centered. They will accept human teachings and traditions even when those teachings contradict the word of God. They will seek and respond to religious experiences and supernatural manifestations as their final authority in validating truth. Uh, rather than, than grounding themselves in the wholesome counsel of God's word. They will not endure sound doctrine, but will seek teachers who are for salvation with the broad road of unrighteousness. Amen. So we have to be alert. Always alert. <clears throat> Okay. Not every one that saith unto the Lord, unto me, sorry, verse 21, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name, um, done many wonderful works and then will i profess unto them i never knew ye you depart from me ye of iniquity that work me iniquity amen so thus the will of my father jesus um taught that carrying out the will of his heavenly father was was a condition of entering the kingdom of heaven doing the will of the lord amen um, however, this does not mean that we can gain or merit salvation by our own efforts or works. This is true for the following reasons. God's forgiveness comes to us through faith and repentance made possible by the grace and sa sacrificial death of Christ. The obedience to the will of God demanded by Christ is indeed an ongoing condition for salvation, but Christ also declares that it is a grace belonging to the salvation of the kingdom. As such, we must continually pray for it, receive it, and put it into effect by, by um, sincere faith and earnest endeavor. Amen. In many um, abominations... Um, directed toward believers to put sin to death and to present themselves to God as a living sacrifice as living sacrifices amen we are capable of doing the will of God in, in living righteous lives by virtue of this gift um, God's grace, power and spiritual life continually given to us through Christ scripture declares that by grace ye are saved through faith in that not of yourselves it is the gift of god hallelujah for we are his workmanship ephesians 2 8, 8 through 10 god's grace always makes possible the obedience he demands of us it is ascribed to god's redemptive action uh, for it is god's god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yet God's gift of grace does in um, is not an annual human responsibility or action. We must respond positively to God's gift of obedience. For we remain free to reject God's grace, uh, to refuse to draw near to God through Christ, and to refuse to pray for the to accept the life of obedience amen we have choices right to follow the lord and, and we have a choice not to obey the lord and follow the lord's ways hallelujah uh, many will say lord lord many will say lord lord so jesus states that there will be many in church that will minister in his name and believe um, they are his servants yet in reality he does not know them to escape the deceit of the last days church leaders or any disciples must be totally committed to the truth and to the righteousness revealed in God's word 
um, and not consider uh, mystery, uh, ministerial success as the standard by which to judge their relationship to Christ. Amen. Amen. Twenty-three, and then will profess unto them, "I never knew you depart from me, you who work iniquity." These words of Christ make it unmistakably clear that preachers may proclaim the gospel in the name of Christ, drive out demons, and perform miracles while they themselves have no genuine saving faith in Christ. Scripture teaches that fervent gospel preaching and apparent zeal for righteousness and the working of miracles can be performed in this age under the influence and power of Satan. Paul warns that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Paul makes it clear that Miraculous powers can be the working of Satan. Amen. God uh, sometimes overrides Satan's activity in false preaching in order to bring salvation um, or healing to those who sincerely respond to the word of God. It is always God's desire that those who proclaim the gospel be righteous. Yet... When an evil or immoral person preaches God's word, God will still work in the hearts of those who receive his word with commitment to Christ. God does not endorse um, any unrighteous preacher or the gospel, but he will endorse biblical truth in those who accept it in faith. Amen. 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 So, therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will uh, liken unto him a man who built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon the rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell with great, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Amen. So from 24 to 27, this parable of the two builders provides a powerful conclusion to the section of commitment to the will of God, as well as Jesus emphasizes on the necessity of doing the will of God. It's necessary, amen, to do the will of God. In 28 and 29, when Jesus finishes teaching, the crowds are astonished at his authority, which he spoke to them. A statement like this can be found at the conclusion of each of the great discourses in Matthew. In each of these form, formula ending to the teachings of Jesus, Matthew draws attention to the uh, authoritative role of Jesus. This is one of Matthew's tools that emphasizes the unique character of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good chapter, guys. That is chapter 7, Matthew, my friends. Uh, glory to God. Let's give the Lord thanks for his word. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this chapter that was just read. I thank you for the edification and the growth that we have received by reading this and learning from this. May you continue to guide us and, and teach us each and every day as we go through these chapters. We thank you, Lord Almighty. Amen. Amen, my friends. I'm going to let you go. That is the chapter for today.